Hey YouTube, it's Luke here. Today I kick off my series on how to weld. Uh, this is going to incorporate all the processes from stick, MIG, flux core, TIG. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys everything that I know personally and all the years of experience that have surrounded me and the things that I've learned from them, I'm going to pass along to you. So today's video as titled is the intro to welding or what is welding. Um, to weld efficiently and effectively, you must first understand what welding is. Yeah, it seems like a simple explanation. You're joining two pieces of metal together. But in all reality, there's a much more complex process that's going on behind the scenes when you're joining two pieces of metal. Um, to start off, what, what you have to understand is electricity travels in a circuit. Okay, You have a positive and you have a negative. The electricity actually flows from negative to positive. During that flow of electricity, you can create a gap if there's enough amperage and voltage to create an arc or a spark, a big spark. When electricity flows through the atmosphere, which is the gap between one piece of metal and another piece of metal, it creates heat. Think of it like lightning. Lightning will come from a cloud to the ground. That is a distance between two electrical surfaces. And when that comes from the cloud to the ground, it creates a tremendous amount of heat. Think of an arc from a welding rod like a lightning bolt, okay? So what we have here is something called a stinger or electrode holder, and this is going to have an electrode coming out of the end of it. Now the electrode serves multiple purposes, but essentially what it's for is to do three things. Number one is to create heat for your weld. We need to eat away at the base metal and then replace it with some sort of more metal. So this actually has filler metal inside of it. So this is going to create an arc to melt our base metal. The second thing is going to be to melt the filler metal inside of the electrode. And the third thing is, is that an electrode is going to carry some type of fluxing agent, as they call it. What flux does is it removes impurities from a weld. As the weld hardens and the weld pool cools, it brings all the deformities to the surface of the weld in the form of something called slag. You're going to hear me talk more about slag in these videos, but uh, what the slag does is basically like the garbage can for a weld. You take a little hammer, you chip off the slag, and the weld's clean. So in a quick little diagram here, I'm going to draw for you exactly what happens when we weld. All right, guys, if we look at a cross section of a piece of steel, I can hopefully explain to you by a diagram here exactly what welding does, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to be hooking one of our leads up to our base metal, okay? This is going to be the ground clamp as it's known. The second thing we're going to have in our hand is our electrode holder or our stinger with our electrode. Consequently, if you're welding with a wire process or a TIG process, you're always going to have some kind of an electrode and some kind of a filler material, okay? So what we have then is we have our electrode holder. Yeah, you can make fun of me in the comments. And then out of the electrode holder is our electrode. Okay? Now, what happens is there's a gap between the electrode and the base material. When we first go to strike an arc, what we do is we take this electrode here and we scrape it against the base material. When we scrape it, it completes a circuit. When it completes a circuit, it starts the transfer of a tremendous amount of energy through this electrode and through the ground clamp, creating an electrical circuit. By striking the arc, as we call it, and then pulling your electrode away from the base metal just slightly, what we do is we create that gap that I spoke of. And that gap is what's going to create the arc, which provides the heat for our welding process. Now, in this gap, we're going to have a little arc here. And hopefully what we're going to do is, with that arc, we're going to melt away some of the base metal. You're literally going to chew that away as if you were digging a ditch with a backhoe. Picture this as your backhoe. Alright, so you're digging out a channel, a weld channel. What's then happening is, the base metal becomes a liquid, okay? This electrode then melts inside of here. There's a filler material. It melts, and it then fills in this weld groove as we go down the base metal. Okay, so what we're doing is we're melting away the metal and we're adding a filler material. When we get done, we're gonna have more material than what we had before because we're melting the original and then adding more to it. Okay, so what you're going to get is a convex weld surface. Okay, 
Concave, being down in, once the arc chews out the base metal. Convex, once we're done and the filler material has filled the weld groove, okay? So what you're going to do then is, when you have two pieces of steel, you're going to melt both of them where you want to weld them. You're going to add your own filler material and it's going to permanently join the two pieces with original metal mixed with filler material, which welds are most often stronger than the base metal in which you've welded on. All right, so if I were to look at this from the edge of the material, As I'm welding, I would see a little groove right here. This is my electrode, and this is the arc that it's putting off. As the arc comes out, it's chewing away this base material. Consequently, drops of filler material are added into that puddle. When the weld is all said and done, what I'll have is a penetration level, something to that extent, and then a bead built up on the top that looks like that, okay? So ideally, when you're finished welding, your weld shouldn't be flat, it shouldn't be concave, it should be convex, because you're taking away the base metal, adding more metal to it, and you're getting a built up welding surface. This is how you know if you've correctly done a bead. All right, so just to sum it up in a few phrases here, what we've gotta have is we have to have a base material, okay? Connected to the base material, we have our ground clamp. The ground clamp is one part of a circuit. For now, we'll call that our negative side. We also have an electrode holder with an electrode in it. With a cable coming out, and that we'll call our positive side. So now we have a transfer of electricity from negative to positive. The gap between the base metal and the electrode creates resistance. When electricity flows through the atmosphere, it creates a resistance which creates heat. There is no heat stemmed from the transfer of electricity in most circumstances. Where the heat really develops is from the gap that the arc has to jump between the base metal and the electrode. That heat then eats away at the base material, it melts the filler material, and melts the slag to then form what you will have as a weld bead. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of resources available here, and there are going to be many videos on the way on the stick process, MIG, flux core, and TIG welding, um, as well as some other processes of plasma cutting and things like that. So if you have any questions or comments or there's any videos that you guys particularly want to see or something you want to know how to do, please let me know. I'll be glad to do that for you. Thanks again.